Hello everyone. Welcome back to another live. So glad to have you here. If you're having a good day, please comment. Just comment a honey emoji if you're having a good day. And I'm sorry, my dog, I'm right in front of my window. So my dog, he's just is like about to bark right now. Um, and put some hearts in the bottom right like this if you're having a good day. Um, I'm so glad to have each of you here. Thanks for hanging out with me on this Tuesday. Y'all, there is something that I got to share with one of y'all. I want to speak to the person right now who's feeling lonely. Who's feeling lonely today? If you're feeling lonely yesterday on the live, I asked for you guys to send some questions because I just really wanted to answer some of the questions that you guys may be wrestling with, point us to truth. And if you're feeling lonely today, I just want, you don't have to say in the comments anything, but like, if you're feeling lonely today, I want you to listen to this. If you're not, like, I love that you're not feeling that. I'm so here for this, but this is for the people who are feeling lonely, who are feeling, yeah, that's who I want to talk to. So this morning, one, one last yesterday, someone asked this question and I wasn't exactly sure how to answer it. And then today I was reading my daily Bible, which yes, it's almost broken. I mean, this is, I think our goal. If our goal can be that our Bibles almost fall apart because we're reading it that much, can that be our goal? Please, please. I was reading this morning in my daily Bible. And it talks about this. So we're going to get into what the word says. In 2 Timothy, it was 2 Timothy. Yeah. Okay, this is it. 2 Timothy 4, 16. Now, I want to talk about Paul for a moment. So Paul, I didn't know who Paul was for the longest time. I didn't really grow up with the knowledge of scripture. Paul is the guy who wrote most of the New Testament. So Old Testament is pre-Jesus. New Testament is Jesus and post-Jesus. Paul was a murderer of Christians when Jesus, he found Jesus on the road to Damascus. He was blinded. Long story short, Paul became a believer. And here he was, this guy who was once killing Christians, and now he is someone who is writing to Christians. Guys, he wrote most of the New Testament in prison because he was being in prison for his faith. Now, in this moment, he's talking to Timothy. It, that, that's why the book is called uh, Timothy, because he's talking to Timothy. Uh, and this is someone who he considers to be like a son to him, not an actual biological son, but a son as in he's just adopted and he's trying to uh, raise this man up to preach the word and to uh, be on mission for Jesus. He says in 2 Timothy 4, I'm just making sure, yeah, 2 Timothy 4, 16. The first time I was brought before the judge, no one came with me. Everyone abandoned me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood with me and gave me strength so that I might preach the good news in its entirety for all the Gentiles to hear. And he rescued me from certain death. Yes, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil attack and will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. I love Paul so much. I love his zeal. I love his positivity. But what I love about him even more is that he endured loneliness just as we have. He says, let me repeat it. He says, no one came with him. You're like, well, no one came with him where? They were going, he was, he was in prison. So he, I'm, I'm assuming here he was in front of a judge and it was really lonely and really sad because here he is, he's trying to live his best life and he's in prison and it's probably not what he envisioned for his life, right? And no one was with him. 
No one stood up by his side. How many of us have experienced times where we were at rock bottom and we were in a really tough spot? We were maybe feeling sick. We were maybe feeling like we're going through heartbreak. We were maybe feeling like we're being attacked by the enemy and no one was with us. How many of us know that feeling? I know I know that feeling. And if you're feeling lonely right now, you probably know that feeling. No one, keyword, no one came with him, that no one was with you, right? And then let me just, he even just like goes over that more because he's like, let me just reiterate the fact that I was completely alone. He said, everyone abandoned me. How many times were you need people the most and everyone abandons you? Your family abandons you. Your people who you thought were your people abandon you. Maybe the man that you thought you were going to marry abandons you. What do you do? What do you do? Y'all. What I love is he says, may it not be counted against them. He then says, you know, I realize I was abandoned, but I'm not going to count that against that person. He's actually loving these people. He's forgiving them. So the first thing I think we do when we're feeling lonely, I think it's very easy for us to have resentment and we must forgive. Oh, that's my totally myself, Tanner. So just a little like comic relief. We need to forgive and we need to not count anything against the people who have abandoned us or left us in a place where we really needed people. So we need to do that. Even though it's hard to do, like, I'm going to encourage us to do that because holding on to bitterness is only going to actually tie us to the person who hurt us instead of letting it go and blessing them. But that myself, Tanner is hilarious. I digress. But the most important thing I want to get out of this, you guys, is that he says, the Lord stood with me and gave me strength. That. That. If you are feeling lonely today, the Lord wants to stand with you and give you strength. And he will. I feel like I say this again and again, but when you don't have the strength to get out of bed, when you don't have the strength to go to the social function, when you don't have the strength to show up for your family, show up for your husband, show up for your kids, guess what? You're not supposed to have the strength. That should really make you feel great today because you are not supposed to have the strength. The Lord is the source of your strength. It says the Lord stood with me and gave me strength. So you in your classroom, guess what? The Lord is standing with you and giving you strength. When you are in your bed struggling because just so much has happened, you're like, I can't take another hit. The Lord is standing with you and giving you strength. I love how we can hear from Paul and he really has so much weight to what he says because homeboy was in prison alone for years. And God stood with him and gave him strength. I also want to say, that God is so kind or we don't stay like this forever. I believe that God is putting your name in rooms that you haven't even stepped into. God is preparing you to be friends with someone that you haven't even met yet. Your name is being spoken in rooms that you're not even in yet. So you got to just stay faithful. Right before this, he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have remained faithful. So like, as you're like, okay, Ash, I'm up. God's standing with me. He's giving me strength. I realize that my name is in places I don't even know. I'm going to be friends with people I don't even know yet. I'm going to meet the man that I'm going to marry and I don't even know him yet. What do I do until then? You listen to this scripture. It says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. You fight the good fight. That's what you do. You finish the race. Finish the race. You about to, you about to stop running because it's getting hard? 
you finish the race and you remain faithful. You remain faithful to what God told you to do. You remain faithful to your family, faithful to your husband, faithful to the mission he's put on your heart, faithful to the book he's told you to write. You remain faithful. That's what you do. And as you are fighting the good fight, and as you are finishing the race, and as you are remaining faithful, the Lord will stand with you. He will give you strength. And you will make it. If this encouraged you, please share it with a friend. I'm going to be posting this. And just know you're so seen and loved. Literally, thank you, Jesus. It's never me. It's always him. He is so kind. Because guess what? This really resonated with me. So his spirit is really just wanting to say thanks right now. Thank you, Jesus. He's so good. He is so, so, so good. Also, share this to your stories if you think your community would benefit from it. I love this community so much. If you are a part of this community and you're a real one, drop a honey emoji in the comments right now. Drop it. I love you guys. Have the best day and know that you are not alone. You're not alone. You've never been alone and you won't ever be alone. Glory to God. He's so kind. Mwah. Oh, also new YouTube video up. It's just a fall days in my life. It's kind of funny. It's kind of random and it's, you know, there's some fun recipes in there. Just chill hangs. If you want to watch that, I'd love for you to join. That is going to be in the link in my bio. Go to my YouTube channel and um, you can watch the latest video. Okay. Have an amazing day.